Hey guys, I wanna show you one of the most efficient video studios that I have ever seen. Everything here is shot live to tape with virtually no post-production, and then they upload their videos for their clients, fully switched, ready to go. They're pretty much a complete black magic setup here, everything from their cameras to their switchers to their recorders, and they have a green screen using Unreal Engine to do all of their background so they can pretty much put anyone wherever they want without having to do major set changes and all their lighting is completely controlled. So let's really dive into how they get all this done. So we're here in the front section. Andre, let us see your space. Hey, welcome, yeah, come, come on in. It's been a fun journey to get to this point. So this is just kind of a weird kitchen in the entrance, but it's like, welcome. I think most of the activity starts happening once we, of course, get in the studio. So this is our psych wall. It's 30 feet by almost 20 feet, three walls. Psych wall, we built it ourselves. We had to build it in two weeks, which was kind of hilarious, but we did it. We got it done. That was just the filming schedule. And so here you see it painted it with chromolite paint, a new paint that we're using for the psych wall and it's super awesome. It helps us get a really pretty amazing key. So in this room, you'll see six Blackmagic Studio Camera 6Ks. So that's going all the way across. Of course, do just a one person setup, but allows us, of course, to do multiple people on camera. And right now we're using Sigma Glass on these, although that may change, but right now we're using the 5100 and the 18 to 35. You'll also notice we've had to kind of rig out, uh, we're using a Vive Mars tracker uh, so that's what we're doing. All six cameras are tracked. So they're either tracked with the Vive Mars or we also have just gotten two of these Exebo units where we don't have to have the tracker. It's kind of communicating all of that in. Uh, what's hilarious though is uh, <laughs> we don't really have a full uh, rig yet. They're, they're building actually a different plate for us uh, to support the studio camera. Black magic, make a little box camera. We can't wait for you to make one of those. Um, but yeah, this is the studio. We're using, doing a lot of our lighting with IntelliTech. So we do a lot of soft, smooth light that's coming around. We'll do a lot with these. They're really easy to rig up. We have speed rail in the ceiling. And then we've run all of our wiring. We just kind of have a wrap uh, around that. So that's got ethernet and, and power and whatever it is that we need to have is all inside that. Uh, drop. Our goal is always to get as much cable off the floor as possible. Uh, when it comes to TVs, we're doing those mounts in a variety of ways. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff with uh, almost like a standing desk system. And that just lets us quickly and easily move the system around, get it to whatever level we want to have it at, make it taller or shorter, whatever it is we need it to do. We've rigged those out. We've kind of just made a custom <laughs> mount on the back that we kind of rigged together uh, to give us a couple decimators to convert. And then all the settings just inside there. Lights on here. We're doing a lot of our rim lighting or kind of accent lighting um, with Hive. So we're using a lot of Hives, but we'll see if we stay with that or not. We're kind of looking at some aperture stuff now. We're about to do a whole project and change this out. So you'll see it this way. So we have, um, what we refer to as our Peter McKinnon shelf <laughs> back here. Uh, maybe not quite as uh, epic as that, but where we've just put a lot of gear, uh, whether it's in all these drawers or up above, uh, lenses, other contraptions that we're going to be using, and, you know, just all the, all the messy things of trying to do production and wires and cabling and I don't know, whatever's all in the, you know. We, do, we make a lot of our own cables, so a lot of stuff with BNC and ethernet and all of that and then just production in general in here a workstation to just there's always construction involved in some level uh, with the studio no matter how much I'm trying to get around it and just have a green screen a lot of rock wool in the ceilings and on the walls to help reduce reflections that's probably another key point we boom so it, whenever possible we're booming more than we are using a lapel and sometimes we're doing a shotgun these are some pencil mics uh, that we use quite a lot as well and that's Dylan. These are like multi-purpose systems so it's got rock wool on the inside to help deaden the sound, uh, muslin, black muslin on this side and then kind of a white, I think we found this like a marine fabric because we wanted something that was still porous uh, to help deaden the sound so we want the sound to go in and not come back out but I put black on one side white on the other so I can add it as a bounce or as a negative fill so I can kind of roll those around so anytime you get these reflective surfaces that are parallel to each other they're going to reflect and so we try to roll these in after we've set up all the shots then we try to gobo these in where they need to be to help just deaden uh, the sound it does all the things lighting and sound deadening 
although this is about to change. I needed this like general wash for the, for the green. So I went to, I don't know, Home Depot or Lowe's and cause I'm like, well, I want to spend like 5,000 or $12,000 on lighting just to light the green. So these are some crappy kitchen lights and a beautiful two by four. <laughs> and then we just hooked it up. They're like dimmable. And so we have like a DMX box that everything's DMX wireless or wired. This one's wired in DMX, and so then we just can control them in zones. Uh, but these are all about to be replaced. Um, I'm going to go with IntelliTech. They've got some new one by one. The secret to green screen, if we just jump into the secret, it's all about uniformity of the lighting of the background. So the more it's exactly at, we use 44 IRE, the more it's exactly at that with no variation, the more the key is insanely perfect. So that's the magic trick. And so the problem is, as we put light coming onto the talent, that light's going to spill onto the background. So now, and maybe if I'm doing like a nice key light, now it's going to create this like hot zone. So now I really just need like these two lights to be a little less to make it more uniform. So that's why I want to have a more like zoned approach to lighting so that I can just more granularly bring it up or down. Snacks. We always have snacks. When the client's there, it's even more full of snacks. This is our unknown room. <laughs> so this is like gear and junk just sits here. But this is the control room where a lot of magical things are happening. It's always funny. When the client comes in, it's kind of like, oh, we're in NASA because they see all of this. I think the clients suddenly realize, of course, this is expensive and cost money, you know? So we're doing live compositing, live editing, everything live. So if we do our job perfectly, at the end of the job, as soon as they're done recording their video, it's finished and it's just totally done. Uh, most cases, there's a little cleanup, like uh, they're right now doing a little bit of cleanup on something that a client just wanted a small adjustment to. So here, TV is happening. So we're cutting between all the different shots. I think right now we're working on an Unreal set, so it's kind of in progress. Someone's sitting here cutting between these shots. We're typically doing some sort of multi-view where, you know, it's always changing. Uh, we have the ATEM Constellation 8K, so we've got four multi-views available to us. So we're kind of showing that down here. Uh, that person's usually editing. You'll notice audio, but audio is being run completely remote. So our audio engineers are in Nashville, and they're t uh, we're in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they're sitting at a uh, really nice audio-treated studio room only listening to audio. We're running that through audio movers. That's how they're listening to it. And then they're remoting into, we're using Waves Emotion LV1 here. The idea is, instead, it's so much to focus on. If we can have an audio engineer just totally focus on the sound, we've gone really deep. So we've had a two-time Grammy nominated audio engineer make like a signature sound for us. Because we're in the same room, we can really dial in those systems and do that. So that's the audio station. The one who's like calling like action, uh, giving direction and uh, what you'll see in front there is there's a, a nine up right now and it's just showing all the different angles we're going to be recording on a multi-view so we have a lot of multi-view so that job is to record name the files so we've built some programs to do that record them have everything stored so as soon as we're done recording that take it's all finished and organized already in a proper folder structure that takes us to this second row over here we've got a teleprompter station right here we have a unreal station right here we do a lot of virtual production stuff so um, that's the unreal station and then this is the ultimate station so someone will sit here and work through the shots cutting through them you know making any adjustments or whatever they're going to do to the different shots there this is the most important row so this is the recliner row um, or the massage chair row so this is where the clients are typically coming hanging out watching all the production happen and uh, treated like kings and queens while they're sitting here. It's organic, right? So like things start happening and we kind of just start figuring out where do people sit. Uh, TD usually is closer because they're just really, they need to be really in the zone, watching the screens carefully, paying attention to a lot of those pieces. This is where people are walking in and out. Right, so Unreal and the Ultimate being next to each other so you guys can constantly communicate. Yep. I would assume, you know, the show caller, and the technical director need to communicate a lot. It makes Correct. sense for them. Yep. The teleprompter, I think, you know, needs to work with the client a lot. I know 
you might have clients they do. and yep. stuff like that. So them being able to communicate. So it kind of works out with the space that you have. That's true. Just where, where people are sitting. One thing I didn't show yet, which maybe we'll go into detail more, but also that teleprompter operator, they've got it. We all have these different Unity buttons that we've put on Stream Deck. So uh, and you can kind of see it there, but the, that teleprompter operator would be sitting here and so then they can communicate to the person in the control, uh, sorry, in the studio from here in the control room uh, where they would be able to be like, hey, blah, 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 don't forget to change this thing or whatever. And then they can switch back over to kind of a wide shot. So each station has a, a mic and a camera that we've placed some Fuji um, X-T3s in, in the ceiling <laughs> in the, uh, over there where as we're talking to each other, we can just give them a face so they're not just sitting in this green room by themselves with us being across the hall here that's been a really cool simple thing to do. so we have an entire a10 mini extreme its entire purpose is just to connect into these stream deck buttons that trigger unity for us to talk and give us uh, you know we cut to ourselves we do a little dissolve just to make it a little nicer so then over here right now and this is exposed to the room which has pros and cons to it uh, the con is that it's cold, always in this room, because we're having to blast the AC to keep all of this running. But these are our three racks that are kind of powering everything that, that's not in these two stations here. Hey guys, Morgan here. Uh, I'm kind of the studio engineer, wiring all this stuff up. Internet, in and out, everywhere. Camera converters, 10 gig ethernet, steering power, tally, camera control, video recorder, all in one cable, Blackmagic multi-views, video hub here, letting us route our signals all over our facility here. Really wish they made an 80 by 80. Part of our system here is the Constellation 8K. Uh, you'll kind of see these ultimates here. These are extra ones that we can use to route out different signals in, keying out a remote guest over Zoom. Flood presenter from Blackmagic. Live streams in 4K, which is really nice. Eight Hyperdex recording program, the recording ISOs of all our cameras. Network rack, Mac minis and everything in it. Uh, Unify stack, so we have their router, their switches, super easy to manage. Everything's app-based. Chattanooga, which is known as Gig City. So we have fiber coming directly into our space here, 25 gigs in and out of our space. Our network kind of segregated out. So we have a studio control network, which has all of our camera equipment. Unreal network, which we'll talk about later. Just a guest network. So that if a guest goes to try and watch Netflix while we're doing a live stream or something, it doesn't totally kill your bandwidth. 10 gig network switch. It's Hyperdex are 10 gig capable. Copy those 4K files super quickly into our NAS. We're able to just copy directly over the network. This is our audio, uh, Waves Audio, are a part of the LTN network, which lets us connect with CNN, Fox, ABC, all the major networks. And so they still use old school telephone to be able to carry a conversation between your guests and reporter or talent in their studio. Two uh, phone calls happening in real time. So they give us two phone numbers, one for IFB, which is what our talent hears, and one called PL, which is their control room. So if they need to tell us, hey, zoom in, zoom out, change the framing, we can have that communication with them. So you send the clean audio with the video, so that's in sync, but the way they're actually communicating with the other person on the other end in the newsroom is through telephone. Correct. I think it's about two to three seconds delay. It's not too bad, but enough to throw off a conversation, yeah. yeah. You'll see we have more Multiview 16s. Like I said, we have a ton of them. I think it's like 12 to 15 different Mac Minis. We've got a lot of Mac Minis. We're very Apple-based here. Sonnet chassis that you'll see here. PowerPoint, Pro Presenter to do graphics, utility to run like comments, you know, to do OBS to pull all the comments in. If we need a computer for something, we want to have access. So we just have a bunch of them. The Ultra Studios, uh, which we're a big fan of because that lets you do a key fill at a Pro Presenter. We're also using a Zoom ISO to bring in virtual guests. Big Sonnet Echo and you, uh, you have are. the deck links in there for yes, those? Yes, the deck link 8K Pro. And then we're also using Dante to get isolated audio of each participant. You'll see this Netgear uh, switch right here for our, all our audio traffic via Dante. So we ended up having to get this Netgear switch. There's no internet, there's no nothing on this switch. It is strictly just audio traffic. And this is on Dante's approved uh, network switch list. And they also provided a configuration file that we could load directly on it to set everything to their standard. After we did that, 
worked great. We haven't had any audio drops or pops or anything like that. This is the Unreal Engine rack, the Ultimate 12 4K, the key everything in real time. Better than software keying. Uh, a lot of people think that ATEM keyers are really good. That, but, but make it 10 times better. These really let you dial in and do all that fine control with, with your chroma key. Six Dell Precision Workstations. These are running our Unreal. A computer, a Ultimat, and a camera. Complete chain is what we need to be able to do a virtual production. Only reason we're doing that, a lot of people might be like, well, why, why, why can't you use a computer and make like three cameras work off of that. We're doing it all in 4K. The second thing is, is because we're ISO recording. Some people might say, well, could you make a macro to just switch and use one Ultimat? You could, but then you lose out on your ISO. And for us, the ISO feeds are super important. Uh, the one here at the bottom is Unreal number one, and it's kind of our control that talks to all these, uh, synchronizes the project, lets us do all our virtual production. These have the high-end NVIDIA A6000 graphics cards. One of the cool things that we're doing uh, with our workflow is we're using Jump Desktop, which is a remote desktop uh, tool. Uh, a lot of people might have heard of Parsec, which is on the Windows side of things. Uh, Jump is more Mac friendly and native, which is why we use it. It also allows us to tr uh, transmit audio from Jump. So our editor, who's remoted into the editing machine, gets the audio in sync out of his speakers at home or wherever they are. Uh, so that's really helpful when you're doing remote editing. Uh, also Jump Desktop just lets us be able to be super flexible. Any of us can jump into any role, whether that's graphics on ProPresenter or hey, we need to advance their PowerPoint. So uh, multiple people can be remoted into a single computer? Correct, yeah, awesome. multiple people can be jumped in at, at the same time. Something that always lives here is the ATEM multi-views. So the first two multi-views of the Constellation, you do have four multi-views avail available to you, uh, live here. And those are for the technical director who's sitting here and calling all the shots and switching all the cameras. And then this multi-view 16, as you saw, we have a bunch of them in our rack, Hyperdeck status screen. So this is how we know we're recording. That's how we know how much drive space we have left. In the second row here, we typically have program on these middle screens. And then we have a multi-view four that's generating this multi-view on the edge here. And that has our Unity intercom video. So that's a system that we use to have a camera facing us. You'll see these Fuji uh, cameras here on the side. So whenever we're talking to our talent, whether that's a virtual guest on Zoom or in the studio across the hall, they can see us in real time as we talk to them. So that kind of lives there so we can always see that. Uh, teleprompters directly below that. Zoom, so if we're dealing with Zoom, we can see as people come in and out of the Zoom call. And then we have this little spy cam that just gives us a overall shot of the studio. So now being across the hall, it, it's not too far, but before, like you were saying, we were able to just turn around and look out the door and be like, hey, that was a great take or, or things like that. We do a remote audio workflow using Waves LV1 platform for mixing live audio uh, fully digitally. So we don't have like a traditional audio console. Uh, it's a software that runs on a Mac. It can also run on Windows. And then we have a server that's running all our audio processing plugins. What that means is we can do a lot of audio processing in real time. The same tools that mastering engineers are using. Uh, the processing is all happening here locally. Uh, what's happening is our audio engineers remote into the computer and they're able to see the console and adjust levels, things like that. And then they're listening on audio movers, service that you pay for, and it's streaming in less than two tenths of a second, a high quality audio feed to their studio. And they're listening on their really nice speakers in their sound treated room. They're able to get really nice, quiet controlled environment, unlike in here where it can be loud and things like that. So they're able to hear every little like detail. Some of them, uh, depending on the engineer, have a fit controller, which is what this is, which is really just a MIDI controller. Uh, just lets you control the faders instead of having to use a keyboard and virtual USB client to be able to get this across the network. So this is plugged into a, a computer that's back here, but it's controlling the audio computer that's all the way over there in the rack, all through an ethernet cable. And because it's using internet protocols, our remote engineers that have these controllers connect in via VPN and the audio machine thinks that their controller is physically plugged in. So imagine a really, really long USB cable just over the internet. You'll see we have a bunch of different Stream Decks, Unity Intercom to be able to talk. Uh, we have these really nice Shure microphones here 
the SM7Bs. Probably overkill for comm audio, but you know, it's nice to have. Kind of doubles for when we do our debrief show. We're able to record all that and have really nice audio. Control room audio is uh, always program audio. Again, this room's not sound treated. So for us, it's just to make sure we have kind of a signal. We really lean heavily on our remote audio engineer. We're using headphones, but we found that that was really isolating us from whatever else is happening around us. We ended up kind of doing away with that. And you'll see these speakers, these little Fostec up here and on the second row. And that's how our audio engineer can talk to us. So they have a button, they're on Unity Intercom, they press it, their voice comes out of that so that we don't have to have headphones. They're listening for a car that goes by that's really loud. Or if there's, I mean, they're, they're so in tune to it that if we leave the air conditioner cranked up just slightly higher than normal, they'll hear the fan noise of the air conditioner and call that out. A lot of times it's just, they're initially helping us with microphone placement because again, they're not here on site. Uh, so they're not here to place the mic. So they're kind of guiding us on mic placement, but typically the director is in direct communication with the audio engineer on, on things like that. General basis for everything. Like I said, we've got the stream decks. We're using Companion to control everything. We're all about that client experience. We'll have their favorite music going, uh, Apple Music on our ProPresenter machine. We have all these different sound effects that we can trigger that are just kind of fun so that after a take, they can get a round of applause or Super Mario coin sound, things like that, just to kind of brighten up their day. Because when you're over there recording, you're isolated. You're in a big green room by yourself. That's kind of some of the fun stuff that we're doing here. Hi, I'm Isaac. Uh, normally I'm doing a lot of like marketing stuff here, but I'm filling in for Jay. Another reason clients come back to us a lot has a lot to do with uh, just how we are able to communicate with them during the filming process. So during a normal filming day, this is kind of our director's chair, as we've called it. And the job of directing is a little bit different when we're doing a live thing. Obviously, we're gonna give them coaching on how to go through our process. We want people to go through their stumbles instead of just being like, ah, I messed up that word, I need to go back and redo it, you know? We want them to keep powering on through it. And on top of that, we've also got a lot of this, these small little tools that help us and them understand what's going on. So we have this Stream Deck set up to do a lot of things. So when it's time to record, we can start recording all eight HyperDecks at once, hit one button, and it starts a timer in ProPresenter that shows how long we've been recording for. So as we're recording that video, that timer can be going up and we can tell them afterwards, hey, here's exactly how long it took to record that video. Once it's time to stop it, we stop all our recordings and we can tell them that they did great. Um, we can play a great, cheer sound that's actually normally just coming through in there but we've got our, our mics kind of picking up that audio but we've got tons of fun little sound effects so you know we found some people love like having dumb sarcastic things happen and we'll try to pick up on like what's their style of humor and so sometimes it's like yeah you did great and <laughs> you know like it's when people are trying to figure out whatever they're doing we can start playing them the jeopardy thinking music um and then for us on the editing end, we've also got these abilities to set markers. So as we're recording, we can say, hey, uh, we're gonna need to cut something in post, so I'm gonna set a marker there, and it's recording the time code and putting it in a Notion document for us, and so it doesn't say uh, exactly anything. Obviously, afterwards, we just know that we made a note of a cut needs to happen at this point, or a pickup where it's like, hey, later we picked up that same thing, and then, oh, there was a really awkwardly long pause we need to cut, just tools like that. Uh, and then our big red switch covers up the power off all the racks button. Um, <laughs> so we have kind of our two factor, like, are you yeah, sure? You don't, you don't need to click that right now. Yeah, no, but. now is not the time. But yeah, that's generally kind of what all this does. Uh, we have the same sort of talking PL stuff that uh, Morgan was talking about a little earlier, but that's kind of generally what this whole system does. So it's pretty awesome to be able to really communicate, feel like you're there, even though, you know, we're very physically separated. You know, a lot of our clients, this is their first time uh, recording a video. And so a lot of people really a are aiming for a specific time or feel like they went really long, feel like they weren't really short. And we can tell you, oh, it was 16 seconds. Being able to tell them exactly what it was the second they're done recording, three minutes, but we have that thing we need to cut out in the middle. So it'll be like one and a half, you know, whatever that is. Um, being able to tell them that immediately after, that feedback really makes people feel like, okay, I know what's happening. A lot of the world, you'll see people do the like, oh, we'll fix it in post. You know, there's that, that's kind of a joke that's around for forever. But like here, it's like, we're telling you what we're gonna do. Like, it's like, how are we gonna fix it? It's like, oh, well, we're gonna record you saying that sentence again, and then we'll, we'll put that back in there. And so that way they, the client knows what's gonna happen and they understand the process a bit more. And we try to do that in a way that's not super overwhelming to them, you know, and they, they can kind of get it and go, okay, I, I understand what's going on now. Over here, this is 
what's doing all our keying in real time, right? And so I can look at, well, here is the raw camera feed, and you see how it switched up there. Mm -hmm. um, it's because that's kind of showing us our, our ultimate monitor. But this is another set of stream decks where for the person who's up here doing ultimate, you get uh, a lot of options too. So we kind of have our presets that are generally what we're doing uh, shooting like F2, negative 12 dB gain, um, and then like white balance 4200. So this is camera control. Camera control for all of our cameras. Through a stream deck. Through a stream deck. Because Blackmagic makes camera control super easy uh, in their API, and so people of the lovely open source internet have now all put out a bajillion bit focus companion plugins for every kind of thing. So we can control everything all uh, right through here. So I can be like, oh, I need to see the false color of that shot. I could also look at uh, focus peaking instead. And it takes us a little bit to dial everything in and get the word out to clients about it. It's like, hey, we know you've been sitting here for like an hour, eat the lighting thing, whatever. But then now it's done and now you just go. And they just keep recording and saying their videos, it's just one after the other after the other through whenever they're done with all their content for the day, you know? And so it, it makes it really efficient once it happens. It's really crazy to see how all of this can happen in real time, especially with, you know, having the ability to do the Unreal Engine backgrounds, like having this background there right now that's all entirely virtual, you know? It, it's, it's some really cool stuff. So in this control room, I mean, from what I can tell, you guys are relying on companion, you got an ultimate controller, you got an advanced panel over there, and then you have the, the little wave controller, but then it's just using jump to remote into pretty much everything else. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for most of the things, you know, when we need a computer, we'll go there, but we really like don't need a computer most days. Um, most of the times, you know, what we really need a computer for would be like teleprompter, that one uh, can, jump into other computers though sometimes if we need it. And we need computers for if there's slides to do pro presenter, that's another reason we'll use a computer uh, generally. But the rest of the time, all the stuff is this built out system we made to remote into it physically. Like like all the controllers you were mentioning. So like most of the time we're not sitting here like, okay, well I gotta jump into this computer and tweak this setting. Most of the time it is like, oh, I gotta hit these buttons, you know? And as all this tech here helps these guys do their job, uh, the client experience, Emma, that's where you come in. You guys get a lot of praise on that. Yeah, so when clients come in, we'll have them come in through the front door. Usually I'll put a parking cone out for them, reserve a spot, open the door for them. If it's raining, I'll go out there with an umbrella, make sure that they come in and they feel taken care of from the start. So usually we'll avoid the studio and the control room because it's a little bit overwhelming. So we'll just bring them back into our green room and our conference room. So this is our makeup area. And one thing that we've done since we're a small team is when our clients come in, um, usually we'll have them put up wardrobe. And then once we've gone through wardrobe, they'll go in the makeup chair. One little detail we've added is we've gone ahead and taken our headshots and put it into Polaroids and added our names to it. So when that they're sitting in the makeup chair, they can see what our names are, see what we look like and kind of refer back to that. If they forget our name, then they kind of have this for reference if they need it. Um, so that's kind of helpful and a small little detail to our team. So then usually when people walk in, we'll have their set already up here. Right now it's Dylan and a different set, but we'll have everything tweaked and ready to go. Um, so they'll come in here, they'll see what their set looks like. If they need coffee or tea, we have a coffee bar with a Keurig over here. Um, and I'll ask them if they need coffee or tea, how they like it. Um, our main mission is to make sure that like people come in here and feel cared for or supported and they leave feeling loved on. Um, so we just want to take care of every single small detail um, so that all they have to do is focus on their content, focus on their delivery. Uh, we take care of everything else. One little thing that we do is if a client says like, oh, I really like peanut butter M&Ms, then one thing that I'll do is I'll take that into consideration and I'll just leave once everything's up and going and I'll go and get peanut butter M&Ms and I'll surprise that to them when they come back and or if they want like peanut butter pie or something, then I'll go out and get that and then surprise them at lunch or like when they're leaving. Um, and that's just an added detail where people feel seen and heard and it's something kind of silly too, where people are kind of shocked that I would go out and do that, but it adds to the level of like care to our studio and it makes people feel 
just good and like I don't know it's just a good experience and so that's like the main thing here is we just want everyone to feel they want to come back here and it's the only studio that they want to come back to. I'm back again uh, I'm your Unreal expert and guide. Here's Unreal Engine it's a super complex program it's made for video game design and development and has kind of been used for virtual production since the Mandalorian that was when everybody kind of learned about it. It gives us the most flexibility when it comes to green screen because we can make the background be anything. So in this set, you're seeing we kind of have this modern office looking kind of thing. Uh, I've got this like chair right here that I'm playing with the posi positioning of so I can kind of move it around. You kind of see that happening in real time in the background there. Uh, so if we're like, oh, hey, that needs to go away. Well, I can just delete it and it's gone. Uh, that's really nice uh, when we want to make changes or, or do anything different with the environment. And that change happens for technically all six cameras because they're all in the cameras. same environment. Yes, so they're all connected. Uh, you can kind of see here this multi-user. So it's almost like you're playing a multiplayer video game. Uh, so here's all six Unreal computers. The six computers that were in that rack. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're, they are super... Uh, powerful, like I was saying before, plenty of performance uh, because we're running this all in 4K. Uh, that's something that not a lot of people are doing. Television broadcasts that are using Unreal are doing it all in 1080 or less, uh, which gives you a lot more flexibility. Architectural models that we're finding online uh, through different uh, marketplaces, such as uh, Avermotion is a really popular one that we're using right now. They kind of do these models that we're able to download and the one that we're looking at here came from Evermotion. Uh, so they're very well built and very well detailed. They're not optimized for virtual production. So something that I'm having to do is go in and add our cameras, which you'll kind of see here. So these are the virtual cameras and I can kind of position it and frame up the shot how I like it. Can you show us the like camera that. That, that this Ultimat is looking at right now? Yeah, let's see, that's uh, camera one. So if I pilot in the camera one here, so there's that. Uh, it's hooked into my tracking system right now. So as the camera moves, that shot would move, theoretically. Right, if I wanted to, I could disconnect it from the tracking system. Now I can freely position the shot anywhere in the space that I wanted. Right, which looks really weird when the subject isn't moving. Right, but. right. Uh, and we're using a variety of tracking systems. Uh, we've got the Vibe Mars system, which is uh, real popular. Uh, we've got Exebos, which are robotic uh, sliders that let us come in here and do all sorts of fun keyframes and AI tracking, so it'll keep the person uh, in, in the frame and all sorts of fun stuff like that. We also use the Marketplace for Unreal Engine. Almost to a year of using Unreal uh, and I for would, actual clients, not just R and D. Yeah. yeah, and we're doing about half, if not a little bit more, in Unreal. Now uh, we also still do plates where we're going out and shooting video, and playing that back and compositing. So that's like actual locations uh, that we go and shoot in real and life. How do you get that footage in? Is that going through Unreal, or is that just coming that, out of a player? Yeah. So that is not going through Unreal. Uh, we end up using. Uh, uh, OBS. The other way is you just go on site, shoot, drop into yep. free OBS to play it back. Yep. And so would you run like six OBSs then? I run OBS on each computer actually Got because it. it's all tied together uh, and they all have the deck link cards. So I'm just using the deck link output of OBS. And it's reliable enough to play back a video. Yeah. So there, and then there you, it is. And then you just key it with the Ultimat mm -hmm. still. You mentioned that. how do you get them all lined, lined up? Uh, we try and trim them so that the video clips are all the same. And then at one point I had a button that I could hit that could trigger them all to go. I found that it's not super important to have them all in sync uh, because there's not a lot changing, if that makes sense. And so when you're making those cuts, it's not like we're doing like a split screen where you're seeing a car pass through one window and you're expecting it to show up on the other side. Uh, so we're kind of finding that that's not super critical. For people kind of building their own systems, you don't have to dive into Unreal right away. You can kind of build the system to take it in, and then when you're ready, 
or if Unreal starts to become ready for you with what other softwares they come out with, then you can jump in. Just one more thing to quickly add. Unreal is a, a big, heavy tool with all these different options. I mean, this isn't even all of the settings. There's even more settings. Uh, being self-taught, how I got kind of got into it was there's tutorials out there, but I'm more of a, let me check every box, every button, and just see what that does. So that's kind of been how I've been uh, teaching myself Unreal. There are programs out there, Xsymmetry, Zero Density, that try and uh, make it more user friendly. I find them limiting sometimes because they're not always on the latest Unreal. 5.1, there's 5.2 that's currently out that we're working to move uh, towards. Uh, so by using native Unreal Engine, we're able to get all the latest features, which is really nice. There's a lot of great uh, channels out there. Aiden Wilson, that's who I've been kind of watching. He has a video on getting the Ultimate connected into it. I'm working through a tutorial right now with this uh, open stage control, which is going to let me have an iPad to be able to control different elements of the Unreal environment. So I can hand the client an iPad and say, what time of day would you like this to be? And they can just dial whatever time they want. Aiden is a, a big help on, on YouTube. His channel is really great for that kind of content. So Andre, you have one of the most efficient setups that I've seen, everything from your workflow to the racks and being easy to get to, no cables. It's, it's very appealing to clients. Do you have any like final thoughts that you want to share about yeah, the space? It didn't start like this. So it started small. So if you're sitting here looking at this like, man, I could never get there. If I saw this when I started, I would feel the same way. But what we just did is continue to reinvest, 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 and everything can be improved. And so we try very hard after every single thing, like let's do one thing a little better. If you just keep doing that, multiply that times time, and, and if you don't care about making money and just spending money, then you too can have one of these, right? So we just, I think the answer is a lot of times people are trying to go all the way from nothing all the way into this. To perfect. And, right. It's, it's like when we perfect. started, it was two cameras and two lights and then two big windows. And that's how we lit the room was with the sun. You know, and so, but over time, we've been able to continue to refine that. So don't be discouraged when you see this. Be encouraged. We've done all this one bite at a time to get to it. And you could too. It's really cool. Yeah, and I was seeing your studio before this in the right. smaller rooms. You were showing me pictures of back in 2018, yep. what it looked like. And yep. it, it, it does not look anything like it looks like now. So. In 2020, I did not understand what a super source was, what MEs were. It was, you bought the ATEM Constellation 8K on your channel. And I was like, I guess I need that. Wow, that's expensive. And I went for it. And then I started learning all about that. So it's just a few years ago. So yeah, yeah and it's now, amazing. Now yeah. you are way surpassed all that. So <laughs> I guess so. Awesome. We have two super sources. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so awesome. Hey, thanks so hey, much for letting me come absolutely, by. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Anytime. This is bonus material. So one of the things, this is late at night. We've been talking all day. One of the things is engage all the senses. And this is something a lot of people don't think about. So I want from the time the person walks in the room, uh, as soon as they open the door, what can we do? Well, we can greet them with a smell. So we need to have a pleasant aroma. So think about like a high-end uh, hotel that you go to. When you go into it, it has a smell to it. Let's, uh, okay, so we've got that. Let's engage their ears. So let's have their favorite music playing. So already they walk in, they've opened the door. Uh, hopefully we've opened the door for them. They've been greeted with a, a, the sound of their favorite song, the smell of a beautiful smell, um, and so we've already we've already hit those two. So now we want to give them touch, and so everybody's afraid of touch right now, and so not inappropriate touch, of course, but like we want to we want to shake their hand or we want to give them a hug. It depends on our level of knowing them. But even if I use Isaac as an example, hello. If he's the if he's the client on stage, then if, if the cameras are looking at him, me or somebody is going to come in, and I'm going to be like, "Hey, man, we're almost ready," and then I'm going to touch his shoulders and maybe do even like this. So I'm going to kind of like pivot on him, and it, if it's a female too, I can touch right here and just kind of move across. And it's I'm not like sliding my hand and doing something creepy. I'm just kind of I'm sit, I'm I'm stationing them. And I'm letting them know, like, I got you. And it's just this quick touch. Um, if I know the guy better or something, or if he's been nervous, I may kind of like joking, like, oh, man, I see the problem is here, you know. And just loosen him up a little bit, a pat, 
a touch, you know, uh, and that's it, and then move on. And nobody does that anymore. No one's touching each other because we're all afraid, which we did some bad things. So it's good that we're being more careful, but we don't need to be so careful we don't touch people. So now they feel touch, so a uh, taste. So now we're trying to make sure we don't just have like crappy snacks. It's like, let's, well, how much more does it cost to just have really fun snacks? And so, like um, what? Some examples. Well, like, Instead of having, um, we may have truffles that are out for chocolates. Or instead of just having a thing of water, our water has strawberries and lemon and mint in it. So when they're getting water, it's not just a cup of water. I mean, we have just regular water too, because some people may not want the flavor. But it's pretty to look at, um, but it also tastes good. And then, of course, our eyes. So what can we do visually to make things interesting? And so we're always thinking through what's the presentation of, like, how can we, um, how can we present everything to make it aesthetically pleasing? As much as we can. I mean, sometimes there's cables and things that you can't avoid. But we're trying to make everything beautiful. And certainly we're trying to make them feel beautiful. And so that's what I realized. Hair and makeup is as much about making them look beautiful on camera is also making them see themselves as beautiful before they get on camera. Because if I feel like I look awesome, I have a different air about me than if I'm just like, well, I'm, I'm okay, you know? <laughs> so those are, those are five. So we try to always engage all five senses every time they're here. And I think in doing so and being intentional about that, it elevates the experience because it's not just like come in and do the job. The more the person feels loved, cared for, safe, supported, the more awesome, beautiful, or handsome, the more when they get on camera, they're like, they're, they're better. Their performance is better because they feel supported and loved and feel like they're awesome. So there you go. Bonus content. <laughs> Bonus content.